thanks for joining me today. It's been a while since I've done an Adobe Lightroom Classic tutorial about the features of Adobe Lightroom Classic because although Adobe Lightroom has had quite a few updates, to me they haven't been updates that personally have been worth doing a tutorial on. But one of the latest updates in Adobe Lightroom Classic has been adaptive color. It is a color profile that you can use on your photos. And I've been using this new profile, but it's not as easy as just clicking the profile saying, okay, well, I want Adobe Neutral, I want Adobe Vivid. This adaptive color profile, it examines your photo. So it will look how bright the photo is, how much contrast is in the photo, how much saturation is in the photo, how intense the colors are. And then it will render a profile for you. And I found that it's not one size fits all. I want to show you now how I'm using this profile through a few different photos here. And also I'll show you some examples of just using my own profiles and then using the adaptive color profile without any editing. And you will see how sometimes using this adaptive color profile saves you quite a lot of editing. Let's get into the first photo here. So here's the first image here. It's an old hut in the scenic room. Love this old hut, photographed it many times. But you can see here that it's already been edited and I've used the Adobe Neutral Color Profile. Now all these photos I've used the Adobe Neutral Color Profile because for the last year or so that is the color profile that I'm using on my photos for landscape and also for wildlife. Now let's go to the second half of this image that hasn't been edited yet. It is quite flat and you can see there hasn't been any editing. The only thing that is the same in all of these images is that I've added the lens profile so that the two images look the same because some of the lenses I've used have got barrel distortion so it would show the difference. I've added the lens profile to all of these images. Apart from that you can see no editing done. All these are raw files. This is supposed to be used on a raw file not a JPEG, not a TIFF file. Please remember that. If we go up to the color profile here, you can see it's Adobe Neutral. And if we click down, we have the normal color profiles, Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape, Adobe Neutral, Adobe Portrait, Adobe Black and White. But right up the top here, can you see just above Adobe Color? There's one there called Adaptive Color. And it has a line underneath it showing you that this is a separate profile. This is a way that Adobe shows you when you're editing a photo that everything that's grouped together is similar. If there's a line between a certain section and the section above or section below, it means that it does something differently. This is something that you should learn and understand that whenever you see a line, that everything between those two lines is a group. Remember that. Now, if I click on adaptive color, you'll watch the screen. You'll click there. It's done it. I did state that it analyzes your photo. And this is why it takes a little bit of time. Now, if I click Adobe Landscape, it's a one hit. You see, it just clicks it straight away. The more complex the image, the more colors there are in the image, the longer it will take. You can see that it looks just about spot on. But let's compare the photo that I edited that took me about 10 minutes and the one with just adaptive color on there. The one on the left is the one that I've edited. Can you see that the two images look very similar? This is the beauty of adaptive color. But I'm going to show you that sometimes it gets it just about spot on. Sometimes it will overexpose your image because it just analyzed it and it just got it slightly wrong. Nothing is perfect with AI. But with one click of the mouse using adaptive color, this image is just about perfect. It's not oversaturated. The clouds look very natural. So this is Dove Lake in Tasmania. You can see there's snow on the top of Cradle Mountain. It was a very hard image for me to process because it was taken at the end of winter. A lot of the, the brush there is a goldy color. And as soon as I tried to sort of increase a bit of the color, it just intensified too much. I found it very hard to control all this goldy color. Now let's go to the image that hasn't been edited at all. It's a very flat image. Look at it. This is the raw file. No editing done. I click on adaptive color. Wow, look at that. And it hasn't 
intensified this goldy brush too much. In a sense, it's actually flattened it a bit and this looks more realistic to what I've been able to achieve. Now let's look at the differences between the edited version and the one with just adaptive color. Look at the difference. The only thing about the one with adaptive color is the sky is quite bright. There is no detail in the sky compared to the one that I have edited. Because the one that I edited, I used a mask to reduce the brightness of the sky. And I used a bit of clarity and a bit of texture to make the sky a little bit more realistic compared to the one with adaptive color. Now before I go on to the last two images, I want to show you some examples of different images of how adaptive color affects different types of images because this will clearly show you that depending on your photo like I stated depending on how adaptive color affects your image. So here's the first one taken on the Sunshine Coast around 8 o'clock in the morning nice sunny day we've got waves crashing a few clouds in the sky now here is the one with adaptive color no editing done all I've done is use adaptive color you can hardly tell the difference. The only thing here is the adaptive colored version is slightly brighter by a smidgen. Can you see how good adaptive color is to use when you're editing images? When I go out photographing landscapes, I might only take half a dozen or a dozen photos. But when I go out photographing wildlife, I might come home and have to edit like 50 or 60 images depending on the amount of wildlife birds that I see. This new feature in Adobe Lightroom will save me a huge amount of time. But stick around because I'm going to show you that adaptive color is a double-edged sword if you don't use it properly. Now let's jump on to the next image. Now this is a duck that I just photographed in Tasmania. I just like photographing ducks. This is the one edited. Now this is the adaptive color. Can you see that this image here, adaptive color, read it saying it was a bit dark, a bit underexposed, I'm going to brighten it up a bit. That is my fault because if you look on the first photo up in the histogram here, can you see how the histogram leans to the left? It's not really in the middle. I just didn't edit this photo properly. But adaptive color looked at it and said, well, it's dark, it's underexposed. So it correctly exposed the image. This image here is a tacking point lighthouse in Port Macquarie. This is the edited version. This one here is just with adaptive color. Now let's take a look at this image here of this little Australasian grebe. You can see this is the edited version. This is the version that hasn't been edited. If I click on adaptive color, the only difference if we swap back to the other one is that the water looks much more realistic compared to here. It is quite flat. Now let's go back to the version that was edited and I'll show you why you have to be very careful using adaptive color. So this is the image here now, fully edited with Adobe Neutral. Watch what happens when I go up to the color profile and click on adaptive color. Looks ghastly, doesn't it? This is something that you have to be mindful. If you want to use adaptive color, which I would recommend you using, then don't edit your photo at all. Use the lens correction tool to get rid of any distortion and all that. But before you do any editing, if you're going to use adaptive color, use adaptive color then. Then edit your photo. Don't edit your photo and then use adaptive color. Because it's AI based, it just looks at the photo thinking that the photo needs to be edited. It doesn't look at a photo that says, okay, well, you've already done this much. I'm just gonna help you on your way. No, it doesn't do that. It looks at your photo thinking, this is just a raw file, a flat image. I've got to take it from this to what I think is a correctly edited image because it will not look at your image as a edited image. Use adaptive color, but use it correctly. Here's another image where we look at the doing the same thing. So we can see here, this is a water dragon, very well edited. This is the version that hasn't had adaptive color added. I click on adaptive color, beautiful, looks very nice. So now we've gone back to the original image and we click adaptive color, same thing. It just overexposes, oversaturates the image. You can see here that you have to be very careful when to use adaptive color. And something that I have noticed using adaptive color is that if the colors in your image 
are very saturated, like greens or blue, then adaptive color has a tendency sometimes of intensifying those colors more than what they should be because it's not a perfect profile. It's there to help you on your way. Understand that anything AI in Adobe or in any program is there to help you. It's not really there to say, okay, it's a one click fixed all. You just hit it and it's done. So I found that adaptive color is certainly a feature that I'm using more and more every day. And it's a feature that you should use more and more every day. If this tutorial has been of help to you, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your photography, enjoy editing your images, because for me, this is my creative side that comes out. I edit the images the way I feel like it. I try to keep them realistic, but I always add my touch to the images. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.